Hi, I'm Jake, and I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2, or PF2. I love PF2. There is so much to this system to enjoy. I love that with the remaster, I can take old stuff and use it still, or the new stuff with the new, new remaster. It's like I have two boxes full of toys. So, Champion, I'm going to be reading a lot of Champion today, because a lot of it changed fundamentally. If you don't want to hear the, the intro part of what the core anathema tenets and all that crap of a champion are that changed, then skip here to this time to see the feats. Or if you don't want to see the feats, then skip here to this time to see the archetype. There's not a lot to the details of the archetype that I need to talk about, but there is some. So, starting with the champion... Anathema. Everything that has changed... Especially the things that have changed the most. I tried to just highlight everything that changed. Everything that changed is highlighted on your screen if you want to read along or just like you can mute me and shut me up. It might be a lot more enjoyable for some of you. What? Don't drink that. Hi, you don't need coffee. Before I read the anathema, I want to point out that the only reason I'm reading it is because alignment went bye bye. And that is going to impact all the champion. So overall, like, the champion changed majorly in its morality, but mechanically, it didn't really change much. So, anathema. Champions care deeply about the edicts and anathema they take from their deity, sanctification, and cause. As with any implementation of edicts and anathema in the rules, these are a tool for role-playing between you, the GM, and the other players at the table. You're still playing a nuanced character, not strictly following a script. Acts fundamentally opposed to your deity's ideals are anathema to your faith. Learning or casting spells, committing acts, and using items that are anathema to your deity remove you from your deity's good graces. I like that using items because the player or the character don't always know that they're using like an evil cursed artifact and they still lose their powers or, you know, whatever. Similarly, using items, spells, or actions that are anathema to the tenets or goals of your faith could interfere with your connection to your deity. For example, assisting with a ritual that raises undead would be anathema to Phrasma, the goddess of death. Many actions that are anathema don't appear in any deity's formal list. For borderline cases, you and your GM determine which acts are anathema. If you perform enough acts that are anathema to your deity, you lose the magical abilities that come from your connection to your deity. The class features that you lose are determined by the GM, but they likely include your holy or unholy trait, your focus pool, and your blessing of the devoted. I would also add any domain focus abilities you've gotten. I guess your focus pool will be attached to that, so never mind. These abilities can be regained only if you repent by conducting an atone ritual, player core 390. If your deity doesn't require the specific sanctification you had, your GM might let you retrain your sanctification and cause, page 89, while still following the same deity. And you could do that without committing acts of anathema. You could just change that if you wanted to. Because retraining is a thing. I love that retraining is a thing. Sanctification. This is new with the remaster. Depending on your deity, their sanctification can make you holy or unholy. This commits you to one side of a struggle over souls. Whether you become holy, unholy, or neither will limit your choice of causes, devotion spells, and feats. If you can be holy or unholy according to your deity sanctification entry, you make that choice. And if you must be holy or unholy, you gain the trait automatically. If the deity lists none, you can choose only options that don't require the holy or unholy trait. If you are holy or unholy and gain the opposing trait in some way, you lose the previous trait until you atone. That would be extremely difficult to do, but okay. Unholy sanctification for a champion can be extremely disruptive to a typical game and should be a player character option only in appropriate adventures or campaigns where the group collectively decides to embrace them. Unholy sanctification and causes are uncommon options. I would argue that it depends on the type of unholy sanctification. Because just because you are blessed by evil deity does not mean that you personally try to injure good people. It means that you hold to your tenets. And it could just be, like, selfishness and cowardice, which isn't really directly attacking holy things. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to the, 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 the details of how the specific subclasses or sanctification and tenets work now. Holy. 
You gain the holy trait and add that trait to any strikes you make. You gain the edict, do not knowingly harm innocents or fail to prevent harm to an innocent if your direct intervention could save them. And the anathema, commit murder. Even if your game includes behavior outside the Pathfinder baseline, player core 397, the acts listed there are anathema to you. Most people in our society kind of know what those things mean, but make sure that you're on the same page as your GM when you start out. Like, am I committing murder if we've captured someone and they still threaten us and I kill them? Does that count? There could be gray areas. Unholy. You gain the unholy trait and add that trait to any strikes you make. You gain the edict, do not put another's needs before your own or those of your deity. And the anathema, commit an entirely altruistic act, such as giving something away in charity. And put anyone's needs before those of your deity. Also anathema. None of these prevents you from performing acts others might consider helpful, but these acts must be done with the expectation that they ultimately further your own goals or those of your deity. Okay, cool. Deific weapon, I'm going to read the first step that is the same as it was before. You zealously bear your deity's favored weapon. If it's an unarmed attack with a d4 damage die or a simple weapon, increase the damage die by one step. d4 to d6, d6 to d8, d8 to d10, d10 to d12. The new part is, if the weapon is uncommon, you gain access to it, and if it's an advanced weapon, you treat it as a martial weapon for the purposes of proficiency, and that's great. Champion's Aura. Please pay attention to this specific section. It's going to be referred to in all of the causes. Champion's Aura. Uh, the causes, by that I mean the subclasses. Champion's Aura. You're surrounded by an aura in a 15-foot emanation. It has the aura and divine traits. Any follower of your deity within the aura immediately knows you're a champion of your deity. This aura is used as the range for your champion's reaction and for various other effects. You can suppress or resume the aura as a single action, which has the concentrate trait, and it ends if you fall unconscious. Because of alignment going bye-bye, causes have been redefined, so I'm going to read the cause section. You devote yourself to a specific cause in your deity's name. Some causes are limited to certain sanctifications. Your cause adds to your edicts and anathema and grants you a special protective reaction called your champion's reaction, usually smacking someone in the face. The following champion causes are on pages 91 to 93. Desecration, which is unholy sanctification. You selfishly corrupt and destroy. Grandeur, which is holy sanctification, and grandeur is the new one. You exemplify the glory and splendor of the celestial realms. You also probably sound like an arrogant prick all the time. Iniquity, obviously unholy sanctification. You destroy, take advantage, and act with dishonor. Justice, no specific requirement for sanctification. You follow laws and meet out just punishment. Liberation, same. You oppose tyranny and fight for freedom. Obedience, you enforce hierarchies and order. Neither of those three have a specific sanctification requirement. Redemption, holy. You try to redeem those who commit wicked deeds. I like that one because you could be like a recovering evil person and you're choosing that to try to get yourself redeemed. It's an interesting direction to go. Devotion spells. Pretty much the same as it was before, but there's a new one. It is Shields of the Spirit. It basically means that instead of laying on hands or touch of the void, which is evil lay on hands, you raise your shield and you shield your allies around you. Like spiritual shields appear. I love it. That's a great idea. I don't like that you have to be holding a shield to do it. Like, why? Anyway, Blessing of the Devoted at third level. There have been some changes to the Blessed Armament that are useful, but some of it was just for OGL purposes, renaming stuff. And the Blessed Shield, it changed because of the Reinforcing Rune. So I'm going to read these two. Blessed Armament. So you select one weapon or hand wraps of mighty blows, you gain that armament's critical specialization effect, and you grant the armament a property rune. The only way in which that has changed is that it took all of the good and the evil possibilities for the Blessed Armament and smashed them together. So you can do all of them. And they're no longer called allies. It's not that like there's a spirit inside your weapon that assists you. It's just it's blessed by your deity, which makes so much more fucking sense. 
I don't want to be holding a ghost as I wave it around in combat. It's, I don't know. It always felt weird. It didn't fit the class. Blessed Shield, previously with Blessed Shield or Shield Ally. The shield's hardness increased by two, and its hit points and break threshold increased by half. Now it gets the reinforcing rune, which the minor reinforcing rune is what you get from third to seventh, and that increases the shield's hardness by three. It gains an additional 44 hit points, and its break threshold increases by 22 hit points. And there are maximums there, so it's just like the rune. But that's definitely an upgrade. That's better. And we knew that was coming because of the changes to shield runes one children blessed swiftness it's not a mount ally anymore it's blessed swiftness instead of what it did before it says you gain a plus five foot status bonus to speed if you're mounted your mount gains the bonus instead in addition when the movement of one of your allies triggers an enemy's reaction while the ally is in your champion's aura the ally gains a plus two status bonus to all defenses against that reaction awesome i like that that has been a replacement for you get a mount and the you get amount is now a feat. Great. Good addition and change. Desecration has been modified in its wording a little bit. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So they added... Okay, so it says, Edicts, subvert or corrupt everything in your path that is pure. They added or holy. So doubt among those holding ideals. And they added of purity or holiness. Okay, I guess it's a little bit more directed toward the divine realms. Cool. So grandeur is the new cause. It's holy sanctification, and I'm going to read the whole thing. The glowing grandeur of the immaculate celestial realms inspires you, and you exhort their virtues to bring humility to the denizens of other grim worlds. Okay. Edicts. Provide a shining example for others, enjoy and share the beauty around you, keep yourself tidy and well-groomed. I kind of see this as, like, neutral good, because that's just generally being good, but it's specifically all about glory and beauty really interesting maybe that'd be more chaotic good whatever doesn't matter anymore anathema despoil yourself by associating with fiends and unholy forces you gain the champion's reaction flash of grandeur it has the champion and divine traits the trigger is an enemy damages your ally and both are in your champion's aura which remember is 15 feet effect imperious divine light flashes out from you to surround your foe the ally gains resistance to all damage against the triggering damage equal to 2 plus your level. For one round, the attacker is affected by revealing light, which makes it really hard for them to hide or go invisible. That's really neat. Relent relentless reaction, which you would get at ninth level. The enemy also takes persistent spirit damage equal to your charisma modifier, and it can't recover from this persistent damage while affected by the revealing light of your flash of grandeur. In general, holy or unholy damage, has, or good or evil damage, have been replaced with spirit damage. Which is cool, because it affects things. Exalted Reaction, 11th level. In addition to the enemy affected by Flash of Grandeur, each other enemy in your champion's aura is affected by the Revealing Light spell for one round. Fuck yeah. That's great. You don't even have to see him. Just, oh, there was a dude behind you ready to stab you in the back. The Champion's Cause of Justice used to be called Paladin. It's the same thing. So those are the only, the only changes to the causes. So now Champion Feats. First level of feat that's new, Brilliant Flash. Prerequisites, Grandeur Cause, which makes sense because it's all about light and pretty things. And sparkles and rainbows and unicorns. Your light cleanses souls of fear. When you use Flash of Grandeur, the attacker is also off guard for a round. Fuck yeah. In general. Not just you, it's everybody. That's, that's a really good first level feat. Next new feat, first level, Defensive Advance, takes two actions. It has the Flourish trait, which means you can only do it once per turn. With the protection of your shield, you dive into battle. You raise your shield and stride. If you end your movement within a melee reach of at least one enemy, you can make a melee strike against that enemy. You can use defensive advance while burrowing, climbing, flying, or swimming instead of striding if you have the corresponding movement type. That's great. I think that was missing. Because you're supposed to be all about protecting yourself and your allies, and there wasn't a way to raise your shield and move like in front of an ally and smack your enemy to get their attention to. I like it. It's a good addition. Desperate Prayer has changed in one significant way, which annoys me. Mainly for archetypes. 
So what it did before is it's first level, it's a free action once per day. When you begin your turn, you have no focus points. You gain a focus point. However, it added the line which you can spend only to cast a devotion spell. If you don't spend this focus point by the end of this turn, it is lost. That sucks. Just for archetype combos. I, I don't want that. I don't like that. It sucks. Next new first level feat, Faithful Steed. You gain the surface of a young animal companion as a mount. See Animal Companions Player Core 206. If you have the holy or unholy trait, your mount gains it as well as do the mount strikes. Typically, the steed is an animal companion with the mount ability such as a horse. The GM might allow another animal companion option or allow the creature to have a different appearance that thematically fits your deity. So it's the same block of text, just move to a feat instead of the mount, the steed ally. Nimble Reprisal is a rewording of Ranged Reprisal. So previously, Ranged Reprisal had said that you can use a ranged weapon, and it didn't specify a range. Nimble Reprisal says that you can use a ranged weapon or melee, but it still has to be in the range of your aura, but it has to be within five feet of that aura's range. So basically, it works the same way, except it's really clear that you can't use your retributive strike at 100 feet away. It still has to be right next to your aura. Eh... Yeah, it, it was necessary. I get it. I'd rather be able to use it 100 feet away. <laughs> I know. Nobody did that because it didn't make any sense. Fine. It's clarified. Good. Next level one feat that was altered, unimpeded step, just added the line that says, if you have the exalted reaction benefit, this applies to everyone who steps. So you could have like kind of guessed that before, but it didn't say that. So technically it didn't do that. But now it's really clear that it does. Divine Health is still good, but it had a complete overhaul. So first off, it's not level 4 anymore, it's level 2. And it said previously, you gain a plus 1 status bonus to saves against diseases. In addition, if you roll a success on a save against a disease, you get a critical success instead. It really had very niche capability. It wasn't always that great. However, now it's plus 2 status bonus, not 1, on saves against diseases and poisons, and to flat checks to recover from persistent poison damage. And it added allies in your champion's aura get this benefit, but their bonus is plus one. And also, if you roll a success on a save against a disease or poison, you get a critical success instead, instead of just at four disease. It also added the line, your allies don't share this be benefit, the, the one about you getting a success turning into a critical success. However, if you have the sacred body class feature, when you roll a critical failure on a save against a disease or poison, you get a failure instead. So it was way more functional, lower level, helps your allies, it works for poison diseases. This is great. Great, huge change to divine health. I actually like it now, especially with poison. It's so common. And it being lower level, it seems way more powerful. Okay, mercy changed a lot, but it doesn't really matter much. I mean, the change doesn't matter much. It's basically for convenience and accounting. So it's still level four. The original said, if the next action you use is to cast Lay on Hands, you can attempt to counteract a fear effect or an effect oppose, imposing the paralyzed condition on the target, in addition to the other benefits of Lay on Hands. So it only did those two with one selection of the feat. And it was one action. It said meta magic. Now, the new Mercy feat, still level four, says you can cast Lay on Hands targeting a living creature using two actions instead of one. So it's just not spell shape or meta magic anymore. It then just changes how long it takes to cast Lay on Hands. If you do, you can attempt to counteract one condition of your choice affecting the target. When you select this feat, choose one of the following options, which determines the conditions you can choose. And the options are Mercy of the Body, Mercy of Grace, and Mercy of the Mind. Body removes Blinded, Dazzled, Deafened, Enfeebled, and Sickened. Mercy of Grace removes Clumsy, Grabbed, Paralyzed. Mercy of the Mind removes Fleeing, Frightened, and Stupefied. Great, it's more functional overall, and you can take it multiple times to get all of those if you want. Special, you can select this feat up to three times. Each time, choose a different type of mercy and add its options to those you can choose when you cast two action lay on hands. Really cleaned up the mercy confusion, having so many feats for mercy. Next new feat is based on a new devotion spell. So of course it's a new feat. Level four, security. Prerequisites, shields of the spirit. 
Those use shields can benefit from your lasting protection. You can cast shields of the spirit using two actions instead of one. If you do, you can choose one ally in your champion's ore to gain a spirit shield that accompanies it. For one minute, that ally gains the benefits of shields of the spirit, even while the ally isn't in your champion's aura, and even if your shield isn't raised. If you create another companion shield, any previous one ends. That really works well if you have somebody who is a stupid caster and they're in melee because they're morons, or just another frontline melee fighter, whatever. I suppose at this point I should probably read Shields of the Spirit so you know what the spell does. It's one action, one focus point, it has the traits uncommon, champion, concentrate, focus, sanctified spirit. Requirements, you are wielding a shield. You raise your shield, causing ephemeral spirit shields to float within your champion's aura. The shields last until the start of your next turn or until you're no longer raising your shield, whichever comes first. While one of your allies is in your champion's aura, the shields grant them a plus one status bonus to AC, and each time an enemy makes an attack against the ally, the enemy takes 1d4 spirit damage even if the enemy misses. The benefit applies only while an ally is in your aura, ending for any ally that leaves and applying to any that enter later. As normal, you don't count uh, as your own ally and therefore don't get the benefits of the spirit shields yourself. When it's heightened, it does more damage when somebody attacks you or your allies. So obviously security is amazing because then it lasts for one minute for that ally instead of just that one round. That's a great feat. Six level new feat, expand aura, one action. It has the Concentrate trait, Prerequisites, Champions, Aura. You have that because you're a champion. You focus your Divine Power to extend your influence and protection. Expand the radius of your Champions Aura to 30 feet until the start of your next turn. Great for defending allies. At 10th level, the expansion lasts for one minute, and at 16th level, it lasts until you dismiss it. Great. Cool. Smite, level 6. They have changed so that it actually helps if your opponent is not the opposite sanctification of you as you. Cool. So I'll, I'll read the num numeric changes. Until the start of your next turn, your strikes against that enemy gain a plus three status bonus to damage, increasing to plus four if you have master proficiency with the weapon or unarmed attack you're using for the strike. If you're holy or unholy and the target has the opposite trait, the bonus is plus four or plus six if you're a master. So it, it does at least plus three bonus damage, even if they're not, you know, evil and you're sanctified holy. Much needed. This just makes it, I don't know, more attractive. It's it's like usable now. One thing that D and D and now Pathfinder has struggled with for a long time is making paladins more than just one note. I destroy evil, and that's it. So I'm glad that they're making them functional in combat, more like video game paladins. They really should be. One more thing that they changed. I guess it's technically two. So previously, if the target of your smite attacked one of your allies, the duration of the smite extended indefinitely. Now, if the target takes a hostile action, not just an attack, against you or one of your allies before the start of your next turn, it's extended. Much more useful again. Smite is actually very good now. Hi. Do you want some coffee? Greater Mercy, level 8 feet. They've just changed it by cramming other feats together and expanding what Greater Mercy does. So previously what it did is, when you use Mercy, you can instead attempt to counteract the blinded, deafened, sickened, or slowed conditions. Now, you choose which of these different things that you can do with Mercy when you take the feat. Mercy of the body, Mercy of grace, or Mercy of the mind. Mercy of the body is counteracting drained, slowed, and if you're 16th level, add stunned. Mercy of Grace is counteracting Immobilized, Restrained, and Slowed. If you're 12th level, add Petrified. If you're 16th level, add Stunned. Mercy of the Mind is counteracting Confused, Controlled, Slowed. If you're 16th level, add Doomed and Stunned. It's so much easier to read, too, I gotta say. Instead of looking up all these feats that do these things. I, I just like that they cleaned it up. It's easier to understand. Greater Security, New Feat, Level 8 prerequisite security which required shields of the spirit which is a new spell so of course this is a new feat shield in hand you offer your ally its full protection as you do yourself while the companion shield is in effect if your shield is raised the ally with the companion shield gets the same bonus to ac your shield grants and you can trigger shield block if that ally would meet the trigger this uses your shield statistics and applies damage to your shield 
I love it. I tried to do this with odd shenanigans between Bastion, Psychic, and Soul Forged. I'm glad this is here now. I'm definitely using this. It's great. You're actually protecting your whole group. This is really good. Champions got really nice little gifts. Something worth noting, level eight feet, second blessing, used to be called second ally, but we don't put spirits in shields or armor anymore, so it's a blessing. It's the same feat. Radiant Armament at level 10, they added and changed a bunch of stuff. So, your Blessed Armament radiates power, further enhancing your chosen weapon. When you choose the weapon for your Blessed Armament during your daily preparations, now you can add the Astral and Brilliant Property rooms to the, runes to the list of effects you can choose from. If you're holy, also add the holy rune, and if you're unholy, also add the unholy rune. So just more options. They also added this next part. In addition, you can change the rune you've selected for the day to a different rune from your list as a 10-minute activity that has the Concentrate, Divine, and Exploration traits. Changing the rune doesn't restore abilities that can be used only a limited number of times, such as Holy Healing for the Holy Rune. Great! More options is more better. I'm really glad that they made it just easier to use the champion's abilities. Just change them out. Next new feat, level 10, Spectral Advance. Prerequisites, Blessed Swiftness, which is the thing that makes you go faster. You gain the Spectral Advance Devotion spell, which lets you move to an enemy by passing hindrances. Let's look up Spectral Advance. All right, Spectral Advance is a fifth rank focus spell. It takes one action or two actions. It has the traits Uncommon Champion, Concentrate, Focus, Polymorph, Spirit. Taking on a spiritual form, you flash across the battlefield to engage an enemy. You stride to a space adjacent to an enemy. If you cast the spell using two actions, you can stride twice instead of once. If you have a fly speed, you can fly instead of striding. If you're mounted, you can have your mount move instead of you, which is really nice. Movement from Spectral Advance doesn't trigger reactions and ignores difficult terrain and greater difficult terrain. During the movement, you or your mount have resistance equal to your level to all damage. Fuck yeah! It's great! It's a, I, I picture like a, a battle commander going out in the army and just moving from point to point to be the most useful. And they can do so quickly, avoid hindrances, and avoid damage. That's actually a really neat spell. Blessed Counter-Strike is a new feat, level 12, one action, it has the Flourish trait, so only once per turn. Prerequisites. Champion's reaction that grants an ally resistance to an enemy's damage, including the Grandeur, Justice, Liberation, and Redemption causes. Requirements. An enemy triggered your champion's reaction since the end of your last turn. You call upon divine power and make a weapon or unarmed strike against the enemy who triggered your champion's reaction. The strike deals one extra weapon damage die. If this strike hits until the start of your next turn, the target gains weakness equal to half your level to all strikes made by you and your allies. Fuck yeah! Beat the crap out of your enemy. Cool fun feat. Next new feat, level 12, Devoted Focus. Prerequisites, Devotion Spells. Your devotion is strong enough to increase your focus to incredible heights. Whenever you refocus, completely refill your focus pool. Not sexy, I know, but a required bit of home maintenance. Slight rewrite, level 14 feet, Aura of Determination. It was just Aura of Preservation before. It's the same feat. Aura of Righteousness had something added to the end, which I think was really desperately needed and a really cool option. So, level 14, Aura of Righteousness, prerequisites, champions, aura, holy. I'm going to read the, the, the beginning of it, too. Your righteous aura dampens evil's might and prevents the unholy from escaping you. You and all allies in your champion's aura gain resistance 5 to unholy spells, unholy strikes, and other unholy effects. Cool, great, that's what it did. Also... If a teleportation spell or effect would teleport an unholy creature out of your champion's aura, your aura attempts to counteract it using the spell rank and DC of your devotion spells. Fuck you, GM, for trying to have a returning monster later. Hell no. We're killing that fucker now. That's it. <laughs> Level 16 feet, Auspicious Mount. Took... Celestial Mount from level 20 and crammed it into Auspicious Mount. So I'm going to read the whole thing that Auspicious Mount now does. Prerequisites Imposing Destrier. Guided by your ongoing care, your steed has developed incredible intelligence and skill. The mount you gained with Faithful Steed is now a specialized animal companion, player core 211. You can select one of the usual specializations or the Auspice specialization. A Faithful Steed with the Auspice specialization gains the following benefits. This one was new. It gains the Celestial Fiend or Monitor trait, whichever best matches your deity's servitors, and its appearance shifts to look more like those servitors. It also gains the Holy trait if it's Celestial, or the Unholy trait if it's a Fiend. 
and then back to the original auspicious mount, what it did. Its intelligence modifier increases by two, and its wisdom modifier by one. Its proficiency rank in religion increases to expert. It can speak the language associated with your deity's servitors, such as Empyrean for Celestials, Chthonic for... Sorry, Chthonian for Demons, or Requiem for Psychopomps. And it also added from the 20th level feed. Its maximum hit points increased by 20, increasing to 25 at 18th level and 30 at 20th level. If the mount has the celestial trait, the extra hit points increase by 5, and the mount gains weakness 5 to unholy. If it has the fiend trait, the extra hit points increase by 5, and the mount gains weakness 5 to holy. Also, it gains wings that grant it a fly speed equal to its land speed. I love all of this, and I'm glad it's earlier. This should always be the case. It's just more fun. Yes, I'm always a proponent of more fun. Next new feat, level 18, Swift Retribution. Prerequisites, Champion's Reaction. The transgressions of your enemies fuel you to retaliate with divine speed. When an enemy triggers your champion's reaction, you are quickened on your next turn. You can use the extra action to move closer to that enemy or to strike that enemy. I mean, you gotta wait a long while for it. I don't know how many people are gonna be playing in 18th or 20th level, but it's really useful. So if you get there, you're probably gonna take that. If you're at all in melee. Armament Paragon is the reworked form of Radiant Blade Master. It was 20, it's still 20. Prerequisites Blessed Armament. Add the following property runs to the list you can choose for your Blessed Armament. Previously it had, and still has, Animated, Keen, and Greater Vitalizing. Just different words for them. It was Dancing, Disrupting, and Keen. They add Greater Fearsome and Grievous, now. And if you have the Radiant Armament feat, add Greater Astral and Greater Brilliant to the list as well. Cool. Again, more options. And then the required line of text at the bottom, you've heard it before. In addition, you can change the rune you've selected for the day to a different rune from your list as a single action. Now it's a single action, not ten minutes. That has the Concentrate and Divine Traits. Changing the rune doesn't restore abilities that can be used only a limited number of times. So just to keep things straight. Sacred Defender does something now if you're not fighting the diametrically opposed alignment of Monster. Level 20, it just added, you gain resistance 5 to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. No matter what. Then if you're holy fighting unholy or unholy fighting holy, it does more. But that's what it used to do. So it just does something no matter what. I like that. That's good. They, like I said before, they're not just one note anymore. Shield Paragon, level 20 feet. Really didn't get anything subtracted, but it got something added to it. So I'm going to read the whole thing. Your shield is a vessel of divine protection. When you're wielding your chosen shield, it is always raised, even without you using the raise a shield action. If the shield would be destroyed, it vanishes to your deity's realm instead, where a servitor of your deity repairs it instead of the shield repairing itself, like it used to. During your next daily preparations, the shield returns to you fully repaired. It added this next part. While the shield is gone, you can spend one minute to infuse a different shield with your blessed shield benefit until your true shield returns, so that you can still use a freaking shield! Great! New level 20 feet, Swift Paragon. Prerequisites, Blessed Swiftness. Of course it's new because the previous the prerequisite is also new. The movement of you and your allies is swift and decisive as the judgment of your deity. If your ally starts a move action in your champion's aura, their movement during that action doesn't trigger reactions. In addition, you're permanently quickened. You can use your extra action only to step or stride. If you have a fly speed, add fly to this list. If you have an animal companion and are mounted on it at the start of your turn, you can have your mount be quickened that turn instead of you. Cool. Champions just kick more ass now. They're more of a solid class. They're, they're, they're more often useful. Champions were lucky in this. Well, I don't know. They, they were graced with a blessing from their Paizo deities. <laughs> now the archetype. I'm sorry if it seems slow, but I'm going to read the whole thing to you because there have been a couple of changes and I need to point something out that's a problem. Champion Dedication, Feat 2. Prerequisites, Strength plus 2, Charisma plus 2. Like before. Choose a deity. You are bound by your deity's anathema and can receive that deity's divine sanctification. Choose a cause as you would if you were a champion with the same options a champion must abide by. You gain its edicts and anathema, but don't gain the other abilities. You become trained in religion and your deity's associated skill. For each of these skills in which you were already trained, you instead become trained in a skill of your choice. You become trained in champion class DC. If you later gain a devotion spell, you become trained in spell attack modifier and spell DC. You become trained in light armor and medium armor if you 
already were trained in light armor and medium armor, you gain training in heavy armor as well. Whenever you gain a class feature that grants you expert or greater proficiency in any type of armor but not unarmored defense, you also gain that proficiency in the armor types granted to you by this feat. If you have a class feature that grants you expert proficiency in unarmored defense on your 13th level or higher, you also become an expert in the armored types granted to you by this feat. Did you hear anywhere in there that you gain the champion's aura? No, is the answer. There is a feat later on in the archetype that is champion's reaction, level 6. Uh, sorry, feat 6. You can gain and use the champion's reaction associated with your cause. Nowhere in the other feats does it give you an aura. Let's go back to the champion. Let's look at the justice champion, the paladin. So how do you use their reaction, their, their, their strike? Retributive strike. Champion, divine, reaction, trigger. An enemy damages your ally and both are in your champion's aura. You don't get one as a multi-class archetype. So this doesn't work. That might be a slight error. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that you have the aura. Because it makes sense to me, especially since it's supposed to be a giveaway to those of your faith, that you are a servant of your deity. And you have to have the aura in order to do this shit. So let's just say you get the aura. It's probably an oversight. It'll probably get errated or ignored. Doesn't matter. We're just going to assume you have the aura. So if anybody brings it up, just say, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to be clear here. All of the champion's causes have that wording. Your ally and both of you are in your champion's aura. It's always that... Whoever is involved has to be in your champion's aura. I did look at them, I promise. I'm not going to actually read the rest of these because they have different names, but they all work the same as they used to. It's the same archetype. That's just a huge glaring oversight. And I do want to say a couple of the feats that work well for the multi-class champion archetype. So let's look at those. Starting at first level feats for the multi-class archetype for champion. Brilliant Flash. If you're taking Grandeur Cause anyway, great, take Brilliant Flash. Brilliant Flash is not a reason on its own to take Grandeur Cause. Because it only has an effect for one round. But it is nice if you're going to take it. Take the Grandeur Cause anyway. Defensive Advance really only matters if you are a tanky person. So if you're taking this as a dip for like a caster or something, you're not taking Defensive Advance. Divine Health, level 2. God damn it, take this feat. If you're taking multi-class archetype, or even if you're not, just this is an amazing feat now. It helps you and your allies against diseases and poisons, including getting over poisons uh, with the persistent damage, and it helps you get higher levels of success when you're poisoned or diseased. Divine health is amazing for everybody. Take it. And it's only level two. So you can get it with the first level four feat ability you can get it with the level 4 feet of the archetype. Security, level 4 feet. You can't take it until your 8th level with the archetype. But that's okay, because in order for it to function at all, you have to take the level 6 archetype feet, Devout Blessing, to choose a blessing in order to get Shields of the Spirit. And then once you hit level 8, you'll take Security for Shields of the Spirit, and you are extremely protective for your group regardless of what your class is. As long as you have a hand free to hold a shield, so you're not a thaumaturge. Unless you attack with the shield boss on your shield and the shield boss is your implement weapon, that's possible. I spoke to Mark Seifter about it and he designed the damn class. He said that's possible. Yes, security. Level four feet, it's great. Keep your friends alive. They're more fun if they're alive. If you're level 16 and you're still thinking you like champion shit, mercy before and greater mercy are useful, I guess. But at this level, you could just have other spells or maybe even potions. So they're options, but they're not really strong for the archetype because 16th level. But greater security is useful because you hold up your shield and you block everything from around you for all of your allies. That's even greater 16th level. You'll probably have an amazing shield by then, too. And also at level 16, because you have to, you count as a champion half your level for taking champion feats. Level 8 feet, second blessing 
to get another blessing, because you can't get a second one with the archetype. It only has one option for blessings, and that's a devout blessing. Level 6, you can only take it once. So then when you're level 16, you can take another one. It's good. It is. <laughs> Alright, that's it for champion. I've, I've spent enough of your time. Thank you for being present and listening to my mad ravings. If you're interested in winning stuff from our channel, we give stuff away every month. The next drawing is going to be in just a couple of days, and it's for this icy 45 millimeter die. It's like iridescent and, and icy. It, it's like it. It's like a very hard, evil snowball. And to be included in the drawing, you can go to Patreon, pledge $5 a month or more, and you're in the drawing. If you aren't interested in being a patron, it's fine. Just come to Discord, chat with us. Right now we're doing a build a build contest every week because it's fun. And we just finished doing Pirates. And today's the last day we're doing Decay and Rot. And the next one is Mad Scientist. So if you would like to come make Mad Scientist with us, please come on down. The link is in the description. And if you have not caught all of them yet that I made, Player Core 2, Player Core 2 playlist is here. And Hell the Wild playlist is here. There's all this stuff, stuff to see on the channel too, like builds. I love making builds. I haven't done one in a while though. So another one's coming out soon. Psycho Fairy. Thank you. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.